Hey everyone, it is me, TNT, and, and I'm back with another episode on the TaskCraft server. It is episode 7. 7? Uh... It is episode 7, and today we are back, uh, yeah, in the nether update, actually. That's why I'm wearing gold armor, and that's also why we have these little guys. Uh, so, basically, we had to reset our whole nether, but we're finally in the 1.16 update, which is absolutely incredible. We got the Crimson Forest uh, over in that direction. I believe we have a Soul Sand Valley, and in that direction, I think we have um, the Warped Forest. I still have not found a uh, Basalt Valley or whatever it's called, uh, but I'm sure that we have one somewhere on the server. Uh, so yeah, I have not done much adventuring yet. I have just set up my portal, which is right there. Um, and then I, yeah, I basically walked to spawn because I actually ended up dying. Uh, yeah, it's dangerous in here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this way towards spawn, no, this way towards spawn. I'm still finding my way. Um, so I believe it's this way towards spawn. That over there was Zix's portal. We got Grand's portal over here. This is Grand's portal. Uh, so yeah. I don't know whose this portal is, and then we also have to figure out where the end portal is. Uh, and fun fact, I never took down the coordinates of my main base, so we gotta figure out where that is at some point. Uh, but I think that this might be a basalt. Ah, uh, yes, basalt valley or whatever it's called. It's so pretty. Oh, I love this biome so much. It's so pretty. Well, I found a path to the end portal, uh, and it's actually in a warped forest, and it looks so dang pretty. I'm so excited about using these wood types, these new wood blocks. They're so, so pretty. I love how they just look like veins, like climbing up this tree. It's so cool. Now, I still understand that we have this uh, iron farm that we have to get to, and we will actually get to that at some point, but I don't think that's going to be this episode, uh, because we do have to go and get netherite armor, netherite tools, and then also me and Gran are partner partnering up, and we're going to make a piglin uh, trading farm. So we gotta go start on that, uh, but I f think first things first, uh, we need to upgrade our tools and armor. Yes! Oh, I'm so happy. I finally found my base, which is awesome. Uh, I ended up going back on one of my videos, and I did show the coordinates at one point, and we are here, and I forgot how flat this area is. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I should, I should finish that off. We have so many projects to get done. Uh, but I finally found my base. Please tell me I have a stack of rocks in my inner chest. Absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, now we can just grab sand, and we can grab gunpowder, and we're good to go. And now we have also successfully uh, set up our nether portal. Uh, I don't think I'll remember these coordinates, and we'll actually set up like a proper tunnel towards it at some point. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go home now, and just, I want to get netherite as soon as possible. Uh, because everyone else has it, honestly, and I feel like I'm just kind of left out. <laughs> Not like actually, but you know, you know. Like, I also want to have netherite armor. Uh, so let's just hope I don't actually die in the nether and lose all my stuff. <laughs> Huge thank you to Graham, because if we did not have access to his creeper farm, we would not have six plus stacks of TNT. So I think it's time to get some netherite. Here we go! First piece of ancient... Oh, is that literally it? I think that's literally it. But we still did it! Hey! Look at us. All right. Uh, so that one I actually found without TNT, but yeah, you just place TNT, you'll run away, and it blows up, and then you're good to go, typically, sometimes, sometimes not. And that gravel actually was placed, yeah, really well to block that. <laughs> I'm trying to just get a little bit of, uh, ancient debris. I already have three pieces, which is pretty good, but, like, if you fly around this place, or actually probably not a good idea to fly, um, but this is, like, where people have started, like, digging. Um, I actually ran into this on accident. And it's just, it's really cool down here. It looks so, like, weird, all this just blown out. Uh, but yeah, this is the new way to mine, which is actually kind of fun, because, I mean, I enjoy using TNT. My name's literally called, like, TNT, and, like, what do you expect from me? <laughs> okay, ready? Watch this, watch this, ready? We light this, oop, we light this, we run away a little bit, just a little bit. And then that blows up, and then it just starts a chain reaction. Oh, there's lava. Yes, that's normal, but we got ancient debris right off the bat. That was fast, so we just have to take care of that little bit of lava. And then we can go mine that. And it looks like it was actually cut short. Yep, there's still so much TNT to blow up. Here we go! First piece of netherite! Alright, I still have to make the smithing table though, which I don't exactly know how to do. That is surprisingly cheap. So now if we just plop this down, 
Alright, so we should probably go... Ooh, actually, I don't know what to upgrade. Uh, let's go for our leggings, I guess? I don't know, we'll probably get more soon. Uh, but there we go! Hey, look at us! We look so cool. Yeah! Alright, but now I actually have to work on the trading center that me and Gran are working on. Uh, so it's really simple design actually. Basically just put gold up there, it feeds the, uh, the gold to the piglins, and the piglins drop whatever goodies they want to drop. Uh, so yeah, it's not that expensive, it's not that hard, and Gran has already gone basically all the materials from my understanding, so we're good to go. That is literally one of the most easiest farms I've ever made in my life. Uh, so we're actually currently leading a piglin over here. So it should be as simple as just walking up here, and then him following us, him follow, following, Piglin, Piglin, can you, can you follow, please? Yep, there we go. And then he basically just comes up the stairs, uh, he thinks that you can rock, walk across that, because there's a trap door there, but then... Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, get in the hole, 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 oh my, ah, 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 ah! Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Get in the hole, please. No, get in the hole. <sighs> I got him, we're good-ish. So now we should just be able to take out this trap door. And then we just do that, and I think we're good. Look at us, all right, I did not like that piglin. We are kind of low health, but we're good. He's in the wrong hole. He has to be there, not there. Of course. Alright, I got him in the right place, I put gold in, and now this farm is officially working. So we already have fire resistance, I didn't even know they could drop that. We got quartz coming in, we got crying obsidian, regular obsidian, all this stuff has been produced by him. Um, and this actually counts as a leather farm! I forgot about that! Ooh, okay, yeah, this is, this is good, this is good. So we're on the, we're uh, in the middle of making another one. I actually have to push that block in with a piston because then it won't fit with like this carpet and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, besides that, it's actually not that hard. Um, so yeah, we're, we're doing good. And this would make a second one all done now. And these produce so much leather. I am so happy because I I really need leather for my infinity room and we finally have a like staple farm. And I don't actually have to do much here. I just have to fill it with gold and then AFK here, which is awesome. And I believe Zix actually has a gold farm, which is for the community. Uh, but I'm not positive on that. But worst comes to worst, we just spend, you know, a few diamonds on a few stacks of gold and we're good to go. Alright, there we go. We have three up. I think that we're actually going uh, going for ten. I believe that's how many grand ones. Uh, but yeah, it does take a little bit to get these piglins in here. Uh, but yeah, we still have three up and that's pretty good. So I think I'm going to go AFK for a little bit. Uh, and just hope that we get a lot of leather. That's basically what I'm in here for. Uh, I was also told that they dropped netherite, but I have a feeling that's not true, because I have not seen one single piece, and that seems a little bit OP. Uh, but yeah, it's there, and I'm happy. And Gabe's here, apparently. So actually what I'm doing right now, though, is uh, I'm partnering up with Zix to make an actually like really OP gold farm. So he had a gold farm already set up. It was, it was like fine and dandy, uh, except for the fact that it did not work well at all because Piglin's AI is somewhat messed up where you have to be like in the same chunk for them to path pathfind to turtle eggs and whatnot. Uh, so he was like, I'm gonna make a new one and I'm like, I wanna help you because I wanna access this gold farm because uh, yeah, he's actually gonna be selling gold and he's like, sure. Uh, so we're in the process of just placing in all the magma right now for the levels. And now we're done. It's actually only four layers, which is, yeah, not that much. Uh, but if we go any farther, then it's, it's not going to be worth it. And they're really large layers. Uh, so I think that we're good to go. We might actually add more around the edges, but not sure about that yet. We're still we're still discussing it. And after, like, about four-ish hours, it's really not been that long. Uh, we officially have the farm up and running. It, it's not that hard at all to make. We actually expanded the radius of... Uh, these magma too. The thing that took us the longest um, was that we actually had to set up the uh, picking up system. So yeah, there's basically just minecarts, there's some wither roses and whatnot. Um, it was mostly done by Zix. Zix, ha Zix has more time on his hands and also more materials, so yeah, but I mean it's working great. So, after one night of AFKing, we have all of these blocks of gold. This is from one night only. That's four, almost five stacks of gold. 
but half of this does go to Zix because, well, this is his farm and he also AFK'd here. Um, so yeah, all in all though, that's still a lot of gold. That's, that's a lot, a lot of gold. We did good here. We did really good. Now that we've finished repairing our tools over here at the end, it's probably a good time to mention that, yeah, this is gonna get taken apart really soon, actually, because in 1.16.2, uh, it's actually not gonna work, because how this farm functioned is that once you went through the portal and then you came back, uh, it would immediately spawn iron golems because it reload the chunks. Um, yeah, that's not happening anymore. That's not a feature in uh, 1.16, or apparently now a bug. Uh, so, yeah, this this is not going to be functional, and it's no point. In, there's no point in finishing it. Uh, so I think that we're going to be taking all of this down, killing all the villagers, uh, and remaking. Or, sorry, um, and making a new farm that actually functions, uh, but is not as quite efficient in the overworld. We got gold, boys! <laughs> But what I want to do now is, because my base, my actual base, not my starter base, is so far away, is I was thinking about actually making a Ravenger launcher. So basically, you just get a Ravenger, you put him in like a little area, and then he has this, um, basically power to knock you back really far. And if you set it up correctly, it can basically launch you 2,000 plus blocks, um, away from wherever you, wherever you started. And I think that that would be so much fun to put together. Uh, to teleport me, basically teleport me to my base. It's literally like 2,000 blocks traveled instantly. Uh, so I think that's what I'm going to try to do now. So I've been in my testing world for a long while now. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you guys through what I've been doing really. So over here, this is my first test chamber thing. So basically the Ravager was here. I'd hold up my shield and whatnot. As soon as he started to go, I would run up these stairs or actually I typically would get him to anger at me right here. Uh, and then, yeah, I basically would stand right here, and then he'd shoot me off, or at least that's what I hoped would happen. It did not happen at all, actually. Um, it worked well when it came to armor stands and whatnot, uh, but you had to be on, like, the mark exactly that it just wasn't working out correctly. Uh, and just so you know, I did teleport him to, like, the middle of this rail, uh, but, like, a little bit off to the side. That way it actually works. Um, so if they're right on the middle, of the rail, like exactly center, and an armor stand you place on this block is also exactly center, nothing's gonna happen because it's just gonna be shooting him up a little bit, but like it's not much at all. So you actually have to push him back a little bit, and that way the armor stand will get shot in that direction. Uh, and you only have to push him back like 0 0.01 um, blocks, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's really, really sensitive. Uh, but I still couldn't get it to work with me, but I did not worry about that too much yet. So then I came up here because I was still not getting good distance though. That's my problem. So if we go over here, with it on the ground, this is as far as we got. Uh, which is not even like 200 blocks. And I was hoping for way, way more. Uh, so then what happened is I set up some nice command blocks over here. And basically if we set this guy to exactly center of the rail, and we place an armor stand right here, and then we hold up our shield, let him attack us a little bit. There he goes, he does a little head shake. And you can see that that armor stand just absolutely disappeared. And if we go into creative mode, you can see how far it went. So it actually is not a huge difference from uh, it being on the ground, but I could see that there's some potential here. Uh, so I continue to work with this, with positioning the Ravenger differently. Uh, and if we come back here and move him another 0.01 block, blocks block I don't know um, and then we go back into survival place an armor stand hold out our shield and he does his little head shake and yet again it disappears but this time if we go take a look you can see that that's the one on the ground that's the one that we just shot off and the one by moving him 0.01 blocks that's all the movement that's like basically nothing you can see that it goes all the way over here that's a dramatic difference by moving a ravenger 0.01 blocks absolutely crazy um so at this point i knew that it was really sensitive which is not going to be good when we're doing this in survival and don't have a bunch of command blocks but i'm still not worrying about that uh so we moved him another 0.01 blocks put up an armor stand and do the same thing yet again oh that was immediate nice nice and if we go check it out he the armor stand has traveled even farther this time so that's the first one this is the second one coming up 
and this is the third one all the way out here don't worry about these llamas they're they're not here for a reason actually they are don't worry about it uh so yeah you can see that we're we are now about 800 blocks away uh which is more than plenty for me that's all that's as far as i need to go uh, the problem was that i still was only getting this to work for armor stands and i still cannot position it correctly unless i'm in creative with commands um so next i had to figure out how to position myself nicely in the middle of this block which i still don't know how to do but what i came up with is you place two of these here two of these here and now we can get in this position that's kind of close ish but not exactly there uh this was actually used by tango tech i got the little idea from him um but now we had to move the ravenger so that it centers me a little bit better so this block will actually move forward by 0 0.05 blocks so what I did is I summoned an armor stand right exactly where I'd stand, uh, so basically we can test it out with an armor stand now instead of myself, so that way I don't have to move like a ton and whatnot. Uh, and then we just position the Ravenger as close as we can below the armor stand, and this takes a little bit, but you know we can try to just get it about accurate. Once again, we don't want it directly underneath, um, or else the armor stand basically does nothing, but we want it something like that. That might be even a little bit too much, uh, but you know, that's how you test stuff up, test stuff out, and then we started going with this guy, and the first thing that you'll see is, well, it disappeared, which is a really, really good sign, Oop. Uh, because that means that I could actually do it myself as a player, uh, that we don't have to use an armor stand anymore, because the armor stand was uh, standing where I was standing, uh, but the thing is, though, it does go off to the side a little bit more. So we have to just search for it a little bit because it's, it's going up against that um, trap door, which is not great, but it's fine. So just moving him back 0 0.01 blocks, we went from like 50 blocks to about 550 blocks, which is ridiculous. So yeah, you guys can see how sensitive this thing is. Um, if we go back, so we're going to move him back just one. Oh, I forgot that I actually have to set him up. Uh, just 0 0.01 blocks and my shield broke but we got 700 blocks away <laughs> and honestly this thing may have been in my way because I set this here earlier probably would have gone about here um, which is more than plenty so the way I actually figured out how to do like the basic setup how I figured out about like the Ravenger thing at all uh, is from two people first simply Sark Scar Sark something like that I don't know um, who yeah is really good at like figuring out mechanics stuff like this and he's the one that actually found this crazy weird uh, I don't want to call it a bug but probably a bug uh, and then the other person that I've been looking at who also built one of these in survival was Tango Tech who's a part of the Hermitcraft server um, and I've been going off of both of their little designs uh, and I only watched part of Tango Tech's video uh, and yeah, if I just watched a little bit more, I would have understood how to do this from the beginning. So if we just say that we get a Ravenger in here, there we go, if we get a Ravenger and then we put him in here, basically all you have to do is line him up with unrods of himself, that way he's exactly where you are, which I don't know why I didn't think about that <laughs> earlier, but I did not. So now if we actually start our game mode to survival and we get up in here, oh, so now we just have to get him to do the little head wiggle. There we go. And then we put ourselves up here. And... Uh, that would be 600 blocks. <laughs> so this is actually my marker where I got last time. Um, and I'm guessing we actually ran into this, but it, we're traveling so fast, the game didn't register it and put us instead right here. But it looks like we get here basically every time. So if we set this up in the Taskcraft server, we can just set up a little place where we're gonna land and then we're good to go. Um, the only problem is that if I do a tunnel, we're gonna ram ourselves against the side and it's not gonna work too well. Now the thing is though, this is not a small project by any means. First of all, we have to get a Ravenger, we have to put him in a minecart, we have to set up a little thing, which is actually not that hard. Uh, but the largest thing that we have to do, we actually have to make a tunnel all the way to my real base. Um, and I actually want to do this underneath the lava, kind of underground, uh, for two reasons. First of all, ancient debris is always nice, we still only have ancient debris leggings. 
Uh, but my second reason is actually that we're gonna redo our nether. We're gonna make an actual nice nether hub, uh, and I want this to be underneath it. So I think that underneath the lava should do good, uh, and we will bring a lot, and I mean a lot, of fire resistant potions. Uh, luckily we have, well, a lot. <laughs> By the way, this thing launches us 573 blocks in one direction and 180 blocks in the other direction. Um, so we can kind of pick and choose from there which way we want to go. Um, obviously, it's mostly in that direction, but it's also quite a bit in that direction too. Um, so we'll have to figure it out. We'll probably have also an ice trail that leads us directly to it. This should get us to like a, a few hundred blocks, so it should be much faster than just using mainly an ice trail. And I have it basically all set up, not the tunnel, but just like the little pathway down, so that's our portal right there. Uh, and this goes all the way down to level 15, uh, and I did have to deal with some lava, but it's fine because once again we have so many fire resistance potions. Uh, so this is the little room I have set up, so now I have to get a Ravenger in here, we have to make the tunnel all the way to my base. Um, and then we should be basically good to go after that, but yeah, that that's, that's a lot to get done. So, might as well get started now. <laughs> but now I actually need to get a Ravenger, which is a little bit tricky. Um, so I need to start a raid, obviously. I don't have any villagers though, which is not good. So what I'm actually doing is I'm over here at Vion's and Lollipop's base. Um, and they do have villagers, which is great. And none of them are on the server anymore. So I think it should be fine if I just come over here and start a raid. Uh, now we just need to get bad, uh, bad Omen, and then we should be good to go. So I got a trail going all the way from their portal. I know there's not a portal here, trust me, there's a glitch in 1.16 where entities will actually be spawned over where their portal was before the update. Uh, so yeah, this is where their portal was. They'll spawn here, they, I don't have to set up a new portal. And then hopefully they'll be in the minecart, the ranger will be, and then they'll get shipped along all the way to wherever I want them, which is down that little hole. Uh, and the, this trail goes all the way over to my base, and then after that we should be pretty good, to, pretty much good to go. We just have to set up the tunnel going to my base, which will take so long. Uh, but yeah, I think that's time to start a raid. Now I just need to get Bad Omen somehow. And after doing a little bit of grinding over here, just waiting for a guy with an actual banner to spawn, I finally got the Bad Omen effect. So I think we can go ahead over uh, to Vion's base and get started on the raid. Alright, here we go! Yes! We're starting a raid! That's fun and fresh. Alright, uh, so just gonna make sure I set the minecart there because it's been actually about like two hours <laughs> since I was last on. Um, but... Yep, all here, all ready to go. Uh, so we actually have to fly back. I forgot there's not another portal. No, please, no, please. Hey. <laughs> well, already had our first death, and I don't know where my stuff is, and there are more coming. And oh, there it is. We're good. We're good. Oh, we might get him. We might. Oh, we got him. We got him. All right, all right. Hopefully, he'll be in his minecart. Oh, I should probably get a shield. We'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. If we die, it's not a huge deal. Maybe. Um. Okay, he's not in the minecart. I repeat, he's not in the minecart. Why is he not in the minecart? <laughs> Can he get in the minecart? Buddy, it's right there. Please? Please get in the minecart. <laughs> we got him. 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 Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, so we should be good from here on out. I will have to take care of that raid, but that shouldn't be a big deal. I forgot how large he is. He might take a lot of damage and die. I already hit him once with a nice sword. Oh dear. Oh, hopefully he'll be okay. It's not a big deal. We should be able to get another one. He's literally on fire. Uh, okay. Should have thought this one through a little bit better. He's off fire. Please survive, man. <laughs> he is taking damage all the way down. He's on fire again. I don't even know how he caught on fire. I'm guessing there's lava like through it and he just somehow glided with it, but... He's still alive, still, st he's a champ, he's a true champ. Come on, you can survive. Yes! Okay, I think we're good. I'm honestly, oh, oh, okay. Yep, still packs a punch though, gotta be careful. <laughs> but anyways guys, I believe that's all I have time for today. So next episode, we should start clearing out this path to our base. It, it looks really messy, I really don't care. This is gonna be underneath the nether. Um, and then, yeah, we just need to figure out how exactly to launch ourselves right now. Uh, 
actually spigot is blocking us from launching ourselves, but I should be able to fix that by next episode, because I am the owner of this housecraft server now, so that's fun. Um, but yeah, it should it should be a good episode. Um, yeah, we'll hopefully have this launcher going all the way to our base, which should be really fun. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have time for, so thank you guys so much for watching, really appreciate it. Like always, like, subscribe, whatnot, or don't, you have free will. Um, it, it would help out the channel a lot, though. Uh, but before we go, check out Sticky Piston! Sticky Piston is the Minecraft server hosting company that offers amazing and powerful servers for a great price. Sticky Piston also has many different types of servers to choose from, such as vanilla, modded Minecraft, minigame maps, and more. They also have a great and easy way to control your server so you don't have to go through all these different web pages and whatnot. Um, it's also great for be beginners like myself at making your own server. Um, and if you do get confused with anything, uh, their customer support is great and they can help you with almost any problem that you could have. Uh, so there's a link in the description if you want to go check them out, and I highly suggest you should because I'm not, uh, they're not sponsoring me because like, they're like, oh, I want to sponsor you. No, I actually want them to sponsor me because I think, I believe, I really love their product and I think that they're doing a great job with it. Um, so yeah, definitely go check them out. Anyways, bye!